In this show, we'll help you get the most out of your audio broadcasting equipment. Disclaimer. All products featured on this show have been purchased and used by Strive. We have not been sent any of these products to review, and our recommendation comes from real-world use and application. Welcome to the Tech and Teaching Podcast, where we give you the tips, tricks, and drop general knowledge bombs. Kaboom! On how you and your school can improve your live stream or podcast. Jordan's had caffeine. We're not sure how today's going to go. Uh, today, we're talking about the what, the how, and the why of audio broadcasting equipment. Uh, we've got stuff. We have show and tell. We're going to tell you a little bit about how we use some of this stuff and uh, the practical st- things about them. And also then the the why, the use cases for whatever it might be and, and why we, we uh, selected these particular um, pieces of equipment. But Jordan, uh, take us through... Uh, what we've got on the table here for the what and uh, and kind of tell us what we're talking about today. Yeah, so for, I mean, to get a nice quality broadcast, uh, for the audio side at least, um, you're, you're going to need a few things as a microphone and a soundboard. Those are <laughs> at the core of it what you need. Um, but for for your audio, your input here, um, we, we, we really like the Audio-Technica BPHS-1. And for the price point, I mean, it, it's the cheapest all-in-one headset microphone that you can possibly get. The value that you're going to get, there are, there's like Sennheiser makes and, and even Audio-Technica make more expensive ones. Mm-hmm. But um, for, for $219, um, this is the cheapest all-in-one. Um, and it's going to by far beat out your, your USB type um, Head, headsets? Yeah, we don't like the, the USB headsets have a purpose. Their purpose is gaming. We're not gaming, right? We're, we're, we're broadcasting games, but we're not gaming. So don't use the USB mic and expect uh, to have world-class audio sound. Um, can you get sound? Mm, kind of, but I, I don't like it. We'll, we'll discuss Please don't that, use it. that later. Yeah. Um, but so since most of most cameras or computers fishing fishing here fishing all right do not have xlr and quarter inch inputs you're going to need a good old old fashioned soundboard it's not too old fashioned cuz it has a usb out but um, this we we do have so the the headphones is going to have a xlr which is the three prong barrel connector here and then for your actual input and return audio so you can hear yourself in your your ears of the headset is going to be the quarter inch uh, cable, and so we're gonna we're gonna ha- need to to plug those in like so. And this soundboard happens to be the the Mackie Pro FX six V three, and there are uh, Pro FX six tens twelves, and the larger the number, the more XLR inputs you have depending on your use case. Um, so with this FX six, it has two XLR inputs which are a great starter board for two announcers. And I mean, that's all you're going to use. Um, but it's a simple, and then it's a USB out that will then plug into your computer. And if you have PC, you will have to download a driver for the Mackie. Um, Mac computers, for some reason, don't need a driver. Um, so, but for the most part, other other once you get the driver installed, they're a plug and play system. Yes. Um, we haven't had any issues with them. Um, and then if you go with a larger uh, board because you want to add on some things, you're going to get into the like crowd microphones, which is we, we really like the Audio Technica AT875R. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be a, a directional shotgun microphone. It's the same technology in this little microphone as what you would find in a longer yeah. microphone on a studio, like yeah. a movie set, uh, so, because they're very directional. Yeah, so fun fun fact, um, the longer the shotgun microphone, the more directional it is. I think with this, I don't know, this is probably a, a six-inch uh, shotgun microphone, not overall length, just the microphone pickup part, but this, I, th- I want to say this is like a 60-degree angle a, a field of pickup or whatever you want to call it and then if you get like your t- the two foot ones that you were talking about then you're like at a 10 10 degree it's it's very very directional um so we really like these for you you can mount them if you have an xa line uh canon camera that has the then you have that xlr handle on it 
um, you can you can plug this in there and get the crowd audio, or if it's on the 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 floor, the court, or the field, you can pick up those um, guys chatting away on the on the court or the the. Yep, you'll hear the, the squeaks field. of the sh- of the sneakers. You'll yeah. hear the crunch of a football play, um, and that microphone will pick all of that up um, really easily. And so it, yeah. it it really adds it really adds that crowd mic is a really nice thing to add. If you've got really nice announcers and you want to add more of the atmosphere of where mm-hmm. you're at, then that crowd mic um, attached to your soundboard or to your field camera um, will be really well used. Yeah. And, and so then the, the next part is that we, if when we're talking, we want to be able to hear ourselves in our ears. And so we're going to, if you just have it pretty standard, you take the quarter inch of the headset and you plug it into the phones of the the soundboard, but if you have two announcers, obviously one port, two people, that doesn't always work. Mm-hmm. Um, so you are going to want the the male to female quarter inch Y splitter, and you're going to stick that right in there, and voila, you got two. If you have the larger um, 10, 12, um, FX10 and FX12 soundboards, you can have more um, uh, announcers or people you you want to be on the show or, or the broadcast. So you're going to need something a little bit different and you're going to have to route the phones to a headphone amplifier that then you can have up to four headphones uh, plugged into that and they can control their own own volume. This does not control the volume of the mic on the soundboard. It's just the volume in their ear. But that is how you would be able to get four people to hear themselves at the same time with that. And then we're going to go soundboard out via USB into your computer, into Wirecast, or your streaming software of choice. Yep. So the nice thing about how we use some of this stuff now, right? And what is really nice is when it comes to the AT um, or the the BPHS ones, mm-hmm. the AT eight seventy five R, the crowd mic, the Y splitter. Um, outside of the headphone amp, which has individual controls, right? None of the rest of this stuff has any power switch or button or knob of any kind that you have to adjust and you have to worry about. There's no on switch for the microphone or anything like that. All of the control is done with the soundboard, which is one of the reasons that we recommend it. So we'll give you a kind of a general overview. This isn't really a tutorial about soundboards. However, these are kind of the things you will see on most soundboards. Um, plenty of our schools have a Behringer soundboard. might be a 1202 or an 802. I have some that probably have a 1204. Um, depending on your needs and kind of how long you've been with Strive, we've recommended some different things over the years. Um, so this is kind of the general overview. Obviously, like Jordan said, we've got our XLR inputs at the very top. Usually the next knob down on the Behringers, it's a tiny little black knob. On these, it's the white knob at the top. That is controlling the gain of the microphone input. And what you're doing with the gain is practically you're increasing the amount of electricity going to the microphone. Yeah. In in the application of that, what you're doing is you're turning up or down the sensitivity of the microphone. And so it's not necessarily volume, it's about how much how much basically how much information can that microphone uh where does it need to start before it actually starts outputting uh, to mm-hmm. the channel. So that's the gain. So it's not, it really is not a uh, volume. However, sometimes we can adjust the gain up or down. If we have a big booming voice, you might want need a little less gain. If you have a small timid voice, you might need a little more gain. Um, on other soundboards, not this Mackie in particular, but on some of those Behringers, you'll have a built-in compressor. And the compressor knob is really handy to use, and I would highly recommend that every school use it um, because what it does is it limits the highs and it amplifies the lows of the input of that channel. What does that mean? Well, let's put it into a sports broadcast. If I'm the play-by-play announcer, I always like to have good compression on my voice because if an exciting play happens, I really can't stop myself. I have to get kind of excited, and my voice naturally gets louder. What happens, though, if you overdrive the input, the microphone input, you will hear a clipping sound, and you will hear the distortion of your voice all of a sudden. And you're, and when you go back to listen to that, you go, man, I got excited, but why does it have to... Um, and, and, and you would it's hard to explain what distortion is, but I promise you, if you've heard distortion, you know exactly what it sounds like. It's that 
crackling. It's crackling. It's the crackle. Basically. It's the. It sounds like gravel got dumped into the microphone. All of a sudden, it's. It's just. It's really like. Oh, that's too much. Somebody it's a really wonderful thing for guitars, but not so much for voices. Exactly. Yes. It's a. That's a different music thing that we don't want to avoid, or we do want to avoid with our microphones. So the compressor will actually uh, step down that loudness, right? At the same time, it will take that timid voice and actually amplify it. And so instead of having a full range of sound waves, and we'll do this visually here, instead of having your full full range of sound waves, you're going to have a smaller range. And what that does is it levels out the volumes yeah. and the outputs of, of your different microphones. So if you have a compressor built into your soundboard, please, by all means, use it. I always start at noon. And then adjust a little more. It doesn't usually take less than noon. Usually, I usually end up somewhere around 2 or 3 o'clock um, on the compressor for my side. Then going down the channel, you'll get um, to the equalizers. This particular one with the Mackie has kind of a high and a low. And uh, on some of the bearings, you'll see a high, a mid, and a low. And it's doing what um, every kid who has been born since, uh, you know, 1980 and has had a car stereo uh, has always cranked up the bass. That's what we're doing here. We have the highs, the mids, the lows, and we're cranking up the bass or not. I will say this. The the best use, and I use, for the most part, I leave those knobs uh, straight up at noon. Um, one thing that I will do is if I'm outside at a football game or track meet, somewhere where we're outside and we're in a windy environment, and you hear that wind blowing in your headset, what I would do is I would recommend turning down the low all the way, or if you have a low-cut button, uh, depress that, utilize that low cut button because what it will do is it will el eliminate to a certain extent that low rumble that is associated with wind going over a microphone. Um, and if you have a windy environment, man, you just can't really avoid that. Use that low cut though, and it will cut that out. Kind of on the other side of that same button though is you got to make sure that if you do have a low uh, a low voice, that low voice needs to be loud enough to uh, get past the noise gate, mm -hmm. um, which is a whole nother thing to talk about noise gates and frequencies and all that stuff. Uh, but you have to be loud enough to get through that noise gate. So it yeah. will still cut out the, the wind. And then at the bottom of, of your channel, you'll have the volume input. That's the main one that you want to um, look at for uh, for your volume of the, the specific channel. Do we need more volume, less volume? Before we get on to the rest of the soundboard, I do want, if I can... A little more show and tell. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, and in regards microphone placement, um, I've done it for so long that I can't help but not pretty much nail the microphone placement. But I have been to events and I have seen events where somebody throws on a headset and the microphone is somewhere up here and they'll just start talking. And I promise you, we can't hear you the way we th you think that we can or should. It, it doesn't work like this. Conversely, I've seen it down here somewhere, and and what you'll end up is you'll you'll hear you'll hear it hit hair, and then we'll oh, well I, I don't want to talk, so I'll I'll just I'll have it out here, and maybe if I talk, then then it's this is okay. For the most consistent pickup of anybody's voice, what you want is you want the microphone, which is mildly directional though not near as directional as the shotgun mic. You do want the microphone pointed at your mouth. Two or three fingers from your lips is where you want that. Pointed at your mouth. Now I will have consistent pickup of my voice. Uh, I don't have to worry about swallowing the microphone. I don't have to worry about uh, it being too far away. Three fingers, close enough. That's actually just a touch beyond three fingers. If anything, we could be a touch closer well, we, we'd always rather have it closer, and yes. then you can turn down the gain or mainly the volume, and th we can work with that. But when we're trying to amplify something that's really faint to begin with, then we have a lot of, it, like, the gain gets turned up too high. We can get some hissing, some unpleasant sounds that we, right. we want to try to eliminate. Right. And so uh, that's that's my, my spiel on microphone placement on on the broadcast headsets. Uh, so then, kind of the last the last part of these uh, these soundboards is the main mix output, and this is the important one. I always like to have this one at zero. Um, I don't want the main mix cranked all the way up. I don't want it uh, barely on and have to adjust the microphone volumes. If the main mix is at the zero decibels, that is going to give us the most the the correct amount of wiggle room on either side of yeah. that of that mix. 
From there, then I go and I, especially when I do my sound check, I always make sure that my, my main mix is at zero, whether it's a slider or the knob like it is on the Mackie. Main mix is at zero. Then I put my microphone volume at 12 o'clock, so that's straight up, and my gain at straight up 12 o'clock. Then I have my announcers adjust their microphone so that we're three fingers away and pointed directly at the mouth. Now I have them do a two sentences in in their announcer voice, which is something that every announcer always loves to hear from their doting fans. Oh, can you talk in your announcer voice? This is my announcer voice. Well, it, do that for real, right? We need to hear that um, while we're getting ready for the show. So do the announcer voice, and then you can adjust, oh, do we need a little more gain, a little less gain, a little more volume, a little less volume, whatever that looks like. But if you always have the consistency of my main mix is at zero, and I'm going to start at 12 o'clock uh, for my volume and my uh, gain, that's going to be the baseline to start, and you can adjust from there. Yeah, and I, I kind of just add to add to that, I'd say that um, when we start up at 12 o'clock on our volume and our gain, if we're having to turn the volume up to nine or uh, sorry three o'clock, it's time to adjust the gain up a little bit so that we can bring the vo- volume back back down or back up, depending on how you want to look at it, to that twelve o'clock position. Um, inversely, if we start having to turn the volume down to say like three o'clock, we need to start turning the gain down yep. so that we can kind of equalize it, and that's kind of how you would play that um, little the knob game of, of getting that all all set where you want it. And if you do can games consistently, if you have announcers that are doing these games on a regular basis, what you should find is that, um, you know, person A, yeah, their their volume is usually about 2 o'clock, gains about 2 o'clock, main mix is at zero. And, and, and it'll be fairly consistent from game to game. One last thing I want to talk about on these soundboards is the phones. When you have the phone's knob, you can crank that phone's knob all the way up or you can have it turned all the way down, and it does not affect what goes to the computer for the stream. And it is that reason that it is very important that someone is still listening to the stream because what you hear from the soundboard, whether you have the Y splitter or the headphone amp, which can get you even more fine-tuned volume in your ears, that can still be drastically different than what comes into Wirecast. Yep. So it is very important to listen to Wirecast separately from what the announcers hear in the soundboard because they they are two different things. And just because it sounds really good in the soundboard or in the headphone amp does not mean it sounds good in Wirecast. And just because it sounds good in Wirecast, they might not hear the right thing on the soundboard. So you might have to adjust. You have to know what to adjust at that point. Yeah. Uh, so, Jordan, let's talk about, uh, real quick, let's wrap it up in the why of some of this stuff. We've kind of touched on a little bit with, yeah. the, with the price point and whatnot, but why this stuff in particular? Well, th- this is just what you're, I mean, you could probably correct me on this, but this is probably a roundabout somewhat similar to your radio s- setup when, when you were doing actually radio. a little nicer with this board. A little nicer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. And it's cheaper than what I had. And, and so uh, this is what the industry is going to use, um, whether you're radio or go into video production or uh, broadcasting, excuse me. Um, it's going to, you're going to kind of know your way around the soundboard. So there's a, those other applicable um, skills there, but it you, your sound is just going to be so much better when you're using this type of equipment rather than a um, USB handheld microphone or a USB headset. Um, get rid of those, please. I'm not trying to hate or anything like that, but they're, they have a time and a place. This is not it. Um, please use XLR quarter-inch connections for audio for this. Yep. And, and so we've, we've worked with all of this stuff. If you want to spend more money on your headsets, go for it. it there's certainly options there, but you know, starting out, you don't need to. Um, they're ob- same thing with the soundboard. There's more expensive, but you don't have to get what you need. Or, you know, if you have a, a f- for a, a long-term plan of where you want to be, maybe, and you need a bigger soundboard, get that, and then you can grow into it. Otherwise, this is the basic setup, and um, the fun thing is is that this is all good enough quality that if you wanted to start your own podcast, you wouldn't have to get anything else to do it. Right. 
and and so that that's why we choose this stuff is is it the the quality's there and the price point is is very affordable. While we're talking about soundboards, quick plug for the soundboard that we use to record our audio for the for the episodes. It's the Road uh, Road Procaster. Um, this is a four XLR input. It has the ability to bring in a Bluetooth. It has the ability to bring in a headphone jack, so you could plug in your phone to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it also has, you see the uh, the pads on the side. We have uh, the use of gaff tape. That's that's what we have. Uh, we have used gaff tape to label because you can uh, use the USB function to pre-program sounds and audio, uh, audio files. Yeah into the soundboard, and you can record to an SD card, which plugs into the soundboard. It's pretty pricey. It's six, $700? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I and they've even... This is the old version. Right. They came out with There's a newer a new version, version, and I that might be around the sale. This, If you can find them, they might be a little bit cheaper. eBay, um, Reverb might be a fun place to try and pick up a used one. I wouldn't really... It's nice to have. It's very convenient, but... You don't need one. I mean, it, I, it's kind of overkill for most of what schools are doing. It's it's fun and it's to have all the doodads and whatnot. But at the end, I mean, you can go get a four channel uh, USB mi- uh, soundboard and get your he- headphone amplifier. You can even get some mic. The stuff <laughs> yeah. if you if you want to, but. Um, this is everything you'd, you'd kind of need, but it is all the, the bells and whistles are, is fun to play with. And, um, you can have, have quite a bit of fun. With you, it. You, yeah. And we, we will hit the music on the way up. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Like we said, you get notified exactly when these videos publish. Cause sometimes we publish them and then it's, it's another day before we actually get the social media out about the episode. Mm-hmm. It's and a busy time of year for us, too. So just if you subscribe, though, boom, you get it right away. Strive is at the intersection of digital media education and delivers an engaging curriculum, innovative audio-visual equipment, as you see before you, and an education-based live streaming platform for K-12 schools. Find out how Strive can help start and grow your school's digital media program at strive.tv slash products. That's Jordan. I'm Eric. We didn't even introduce ourselves. I hope everybody knows who we are at this point. They, they should. Okay, that's good. All right, that's it for this week's episode. We'll see you next time on the Tech and Teaching Podcast.